This is why you don't start the Jeep when the hoses are disconnected. Is <laughs> forever right? Yeah. Sucked in. All right, Mike, so what's the first thing we got to do? We got to remove the knuckle side of the drag link, which is a 22 millimeter socket, deep well. We'll loosen this, and that way we can uh, loosen the, the tie rod on the knuckle side so we can drop it all the way out. And then we'll just tighten it back up, and that way that allows us to swing the wheels back and forth with the tie rod still attached so we can make our measurements. Now we're going to remove the string stabilizer in the bracket. That way we have a clean place with nothing in the way so we can take our measurements. All right, so we're going to start by taking the driver tire as well as the passenger tire and bring it all the way full lockout on the driver's edge. And then if you get him down by Mike down there, you're going to be able to see that he's going to take a mark with a straight edge. Make a mark. Full lock to the driver. Right. Yep. I'm going full lock on the passenger side. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a measurement between the inside of the two lines and we're right at six and a half inches. We're taking these measurements so we can send them to Redneck Ram so they can limit the travel of the hydraulic ram. This is where we uh, remove the drag link from the drop pitman arm. So then we remove the lines and the steering column and the four bolts and we'll be able to remove the steering gear out of the Jeep spring. Apparently we need a pickle fork to disconnect the pitman bolt from the drag link, so here we are. Hopefully this fixes it. Check out this beauty. Keep hitting it. We didn't have the tools to get the pitman arm off while the steering gear was still attached to the Jeep, which is why you will see it still attached throughout the video. We got to remove the steering column bolt that goes into the steering gear. So we're going to take that off. And what you don't want to do is touch the steering wheel because that's how you break the clock spring. See? Brian's going to get a wrench and we're going to remove the two power steering lines that go into the steering gear. I labeled them just for my peace of mind, F for fender and M for motor. That way I know exactly where they go and I don't screw it up. Now we're going to remove the four bolts that hold the steering gear on the frame rail and then once we do that, we can sneak that guy out and take this wonderful dingle little bobber off, okay?
Stop, dude. That's my brand new wrench. <laughs> oh, man, guys. What the? Oh, dude, that's... Uh, this dude. is why you don't start the Jeep when the hoses are disconnected. Is spray over there? Right? <laughs> yeah. Sick, dude. <laughs> And hold on. Which way are you trying to go with it? Over the front of the axle. Watch out, because I don't want to get out of my shirt. Yeah. Hold on. Should be able to just pull it out now. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to print off our order form. It got submitted digitally to Redneck Ram. We're also going to print everything out, put it inside two Ziploc bags, seal it up, and include it in the box with the power steering box. Not shipped to this address before. So we got the steering box out, boxed up, package dropped off at UPS, as you guys saw. It's on its way to West Texas Off-Road, where Redneck Ram is going to go through it and get our system all set up for us. Once they get it, it should be about Tuesday. It's going to take them about three business days to get that boxed up and shipped back out to us. So we should have that and maybe end call it a, yeah, end of next week to another week from that. Um, if you guys liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Anything else? And hit the notification button. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, guys.